Hey there, fellow edgelords, I'm Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis. And we do know that Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft came out like, almost a month ago, uh, but the main reason we wanted to do this show is it would be a missed opportunity for us to rave a lot about Ravenloft. So let's get to it on this web DM. This episode is brought to you by Dungeon Fog, the online map maker and authoring tool for game masters. With this any award winning tool, you can save yourself hours of time when you generate gorgeous maps of buildings, rooms, dungeons, and more. They've just added an exciting new feature, GM Notes. Use these to add notes, room descriptions, or monster stat blocks onto the maps you draw. Create dynamic legends, lay out and format PDFs, import your World Ample articles, and more. Everything you see here was made using these new tools. They've got free subscription and on-demand access options available. Check out Dungeon Fog, y'all. Link in the description. All right, Jim. So the mists have cleared, and we find ourselves in Ravenloft. So why yeah. don't we just yeah, we uh, do. why don't we just why don't we just talk about what we've seen? I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> the talk things about, that we have uh, seen. Yeah, all the yes, everything. We've seen too much. Uh, <laughs> would drive normal men mad. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, we're going to talk about a uh, little uh, Van Richten's guide to uh, Ravenloft, a little review, and, uh, you know, sort of mm. things that, uh, that we find notable and, uh, and interesting about it. And you know, I like doing these because, you know, fifth edition is the big elephant in the room. d and is the, uh, the game that most people start out at with when they're playing and for a lot of people it's synonymous with yeah. role playing so something like this where they're updating a classic setting and sort of presenting it as a new format for a book is uh i'm super interested in yeah well that, but that, that is the thing though is they you know they've done the magic settings but other than that they have not done a lot of D yeah. like original settings and you know, Eberron, we've been doing this for a while, and and there's yeah. been a clamor for it for a while. Yes. Like, I mean, there's a reason we're doing what we're doing with our Kickstarter. You oh, know, sure, like, yeah, there's yeah. There's a reason yeah. we wrote a book, right? <laughs> and so, it, I will say this: it 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 is refreshing to read a, a, a setting book and to to learn about it uh, because you know, like, I, like I didn't run out of the, uh, or excuse me, not out of the abyss. What am I talking about? Curse of Strahd. Mm -hmm. But I did look through it after the fact. And yeah. I thought it was like, there's a reason why I think it's the most beloved uh, adventure. Oh, certainly. We've talked yeah. about this before. There's a lot to love about it. Uh, yeah. Just be, There's a lot to love about it. And, and, and it, it provides a very vivid setting. And so for them to finally put the, the finishing, you know, coat on it and the, they wax this thing up, <laughs> and roll it out on, in, onto the lot, you know, it's like, okay, well, yeah. you know, it, like to me, it wasn't my first option of what I wanted. Because Certainly again, not, yeah. they just had an adventure in this setting, but I will say after looking at it, I'm glad they did. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a it's a it's a fun book. It's a fun read. Like yeah, certainly. And you don't really get that with a lot of five E books. Like they're not fun to just sit down and just read. Yeah, yeah. There's there's not a lot of those. It's 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 a it's a different book than we've really kind of seen from fifth edition. I think there's parts of mm -hmm. it that are obviously a setting book and parts of it that are, are more of a DMs toolkit. It, it's primarily a DMs book. And I think it's for, sort of like meant for DMs who are new to Ravenloft or new to fantasy horror games. And in that sense, it's an excellent book. But like for me, the setting part of it, I'm less interested in because like Ravenloft was never one of my faves. I don't know that much about it. Uh, I've played in Curse of Strahd and, and run the original Ravenloft several times, but like as a setting, uh, I, you know, I wasn't really familiar with it. And so when we're, we start to get into like the elements of the setting that's presented in Van Richten's guide. It's like, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like a traditional setting book in the sense that it's not a lot of detailed lore. It's not a gazetteer of, of, of this place. It's sort of like, top level, hit the themes, hit the big points, give you some, you know, inspiration and advice and ideas, and then you sort of build the rest. And in yeah. that sense, like as an introduction to this setting, I was hooked. Like there's a lot to love about Ravenloft as a setting. And I think for, for me, it's the, it's the fact that, that it is a magical place that as, you know, as like the, the intro says, it has its own nightmare logic. 
and that this yeah. place, the, you know, the domains of dread, they, they're in the Shadowfell, right? It's, it, they're prisons for these dark lords. They're separated by these mists that come and go and, and you know, either permit or deny access. And, and there's these sort of like mysterious dark powers that are, you know, behind it all. But, but they're, but, you know, they're very nebulous as to even what they are or, or who they are, or how you interact with them. And like immediately I'm like, I love this. This is what a wonderful idea for setting because mm -hmm. you can have the mist of Ravenloft come in and engulf the party and you have your gothic horror or body horror, or whatever kind of adventure that you want. And then the mists come and you're back to your regular campaign. And for long-term gaming, for games where you're playing the same character, same campaign world for a long time, more than a year or so, having the ability to like completely palette swap <laughs> and play a mm -hmm. completely different game different genre with the same characters in the same world and, and connected to the same events is a powerful tool because it gives you that moment to say like, you know what, we're really, this campaign's like, it's just, it's getting tired. Let's try something different, but we don't want to start something brand new, right? Let's go to Ravenloft and yeah. adventure for a while. Let's pick a domain of dread. We yeah. really like and adventure there for a bit. And then we'll be back. Yeah. Let, let's, yeah. let's, let's stitch a new plot to this, uh, to this, to this campaign, uh, pop it over to Lamordia, you know, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and in that sense, I really like the setting that that's presented in Van Richten. Mm -hmm. It's that it serves that purpose. And I think it serves it well. Yeah. And, and what I do like is, uh, in the introduction where they're kind of running through like the secrets of, yeah. of Ravenloft and like in ways to think about the dark powers, like ways to think about the domains and like how, like just, just the general rules to get you in the right mindset. I thought like, I really did um, enjoy that aspect of it. It's a good yeah. setup to kind of let you enjoy the rest of the book. However you see fit. Um, there, the, the only thing that was like a little bit like, huh? Was, <laughs> When they're like, "Hey, sometimes comedy and levity is a good thing for for horror to break tension," and then like <laughs> the next chapter is like, "Players, don't be joking because comedy can break tension." Like that's yeah. that's that's literally like the only thing that kind of made me like scratch yeah, my yeah. head. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a similar but, thought. <laughs> but you know, other than that, hey, it, you know, I, I I get it. You know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even those two, even those two points are like they're both right. Like, yeah, you. You, levity and and the like is uh, pretty essential for for games that deal in like dark themes and high tension or like real, you know, it can be emotionally uh, draining. Uh, you know, if you're playing in the, in that mindset, mm -hmm. so like having a little bit of that is helpful. I love dark fantasy; it's one of my favorite genres yeah. of, of gaming, and it I find humor is essential for it. But like yes. when to be humorous, what kinds of jokes to yeah. make? That's that's something that can be a real killer, and so. Um, yeah, I, 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 I see them less as contradictory, but it, I, it was notable for me, too, when I was watching. I was like, oh, yeah, I read that. I was like, oh, that's weird. They didn't kind of, okay. But, yeah, you it, know. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's okay if you're, like, in a chase scene with some headless horsemen and one gets in front of you and you say, how did he get ahead of us? Like, that's an okay <laughs> joke. But, you know, when you're yeah, yeah. squaring off against, you know, the, 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 the Strahd, you know, you don't throw your mom in there or something sure, like yeah, that, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, you just have to pick your pick your pick your audience. Pick your Come humor. On. Pick your humor. Get, get that tight five ready for uh, your <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But like in, in terms of the advice for like how to play in Ravenloft as a setting, I think it's really good. There's really good advice for the players in the in that uh, character options chapter because you know it's it's it sets the tone for what they should be thinking of for their characters characters that prepare mm -hmm. to be frightened, for instance. And then, like, presents a variety of, you know, options that they can use to sort of customize that. But it's really the advice about, like, how to get ready for this kind of game and how to sort of prepare it. Because so much about running successful fantasy horror, right? And let's be clear, Ravenloft is a game that borrows the tropes and trappings of gothic horror and other types of horror genres, but brings them into a distinctly D&D &D world. And for yeah. fans of horror gaming that that might not be a, up to their taste because there's still D&D characters here. They're still doing their spells, they still can bounce back from a lot of uh you know you know effects and negative consequences of their actions sort of in mechanical sense curses and, and conditions and things like that. And like you're still playing in that mode and eventually 
they get to high enough level where they can lay a smack down on a lot of things that would otherwise be scary to them. And like, to me, I, I, I don't think fighting that is a productive way to play the game. I think leaning into that uh, and, and Ravenloft says it, right? Like these are heroes. You're playing heroes. No one else can do this. Mm -hmm. Your, your, your characters can, and that like singles them out to the dark powers. And to me, like the fact that they say this is about playing heroes ameliorates some of the the setting elements that if I was a player, you know, making a character here, I'd be like, well, I don't, why am I always caring about the dark Lords? This is their thing. These are their prisons. I want to play a game where I'm like, I have agency, but the DM can say like, Oh, well, you know what? Maybe the dark powers, AKA the DM is using you, your player, you know, your characters to torment the NPCs, to open a possibility yeah. that, that these nobodies, these mortals mm -hmm. can get the drop and, and the better of, uh, you know, the Strahd or one of the other Dark Lords. I think it's really cool. I, yeah. I like the, the meta around it. It's very fun. Yeah, and, and, and there's also a lot of good advice for, uh, like, like this book asks a lot of questions, right? Like when, yeah, yeah. when it describes what, you know, hey, think about your dark domains, and it asks the questions of, like, what you should be thinking about when you're, you're in these places, and I think that's really good. But it also, uh, I really like the advice when it when they're talking about the dark lords is looking at your players like t biffs they're you know traits bonds you know uh mm -hmm. you know flaws um and coming up with mirrors to those like dark mirrors yeah. to those yeah. for your dark lords so that the players once they interact with them can see like they'll pick up on those things like oh you're you're against the thing that I love the most. How dare you! Like you're giving, <laughs> yeah. you're pitting the players, and you're 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 kind of building that friction in. All they yeah. have to do is interact to feel it, and therefore that will that will hook them, and that'll bring Certainly. them further into, you know, screwing over this dark this dark lord. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. What do you think of some of the some of the more like mechanical aspects of the character options? Because I think the advice in the character options section, uh, book, sort of creating characters for Ravenloft is really solid and. So oh, uh, like the mechanical I, stuff is, what do you think? Well, I, I like it. All right. Uh, as far as what I do like is the fact that they have lineages uh, mm -hmm. instead of just races. Like yeah. you slap this on top of whatever race you want to be. Mm -hmm. So if you mm -hmm. want to be a hex blood and kind of haggy and do all that fun stuff, or if you want to be a damp here and basically be a vampire, but you got to hold it back, but you're still drinking people's <laughs> blood, which I find there's a bit of, even Blade had Cognitive to drink dissonance blood. there. Even Blade had huh? to drink. He had a serum, but he I still mean, had that to is, drink it. That is, <laughs> that's true. I, 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 that's true. I don't know. I just, I, that, that's, that's the only part that kind of bumps up. Like when you read the flavor text and you get down to the mechanics, it's like you have to hold off the slate your, to slake your thirst, and then it's like I drink blood and get some, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, whatever. There, um, they're having to walk yeah. a fine line, I think, with a lot of these options yes. because the story in, in embedded in some of these mechanics, especially like the Dampier, like there's at least one of them which is like I'm a otherworldly being in the process of transformation, and or something. It's like that just that's just it. that's just sort of a nugget that's that's left there. That if I were a DM and I saw a player with that, I was like, oh, let's let's explore that. Let's like make that a part of the game. But like, there's a lot of things like this, whether it's the lineages or the subclass or the dark gifts, where you can just accept sort of the surface level of it and move on, or you can dig deeper and develop this idea further of like, well, what does it mean to try to resist your hunger? What does it mean that you're going to become something more th than what you are now? Or, or like, what does it mean that you're reborn and you had died before? And so when I think of like a very character centric kind of D and D, I see like a, most of the options in this reinforcing that and that this, this mm -hmm. section and, and really a Ravenloft game is for players who really like to delve deep into their character's backstory and their motivations and, and why they're doing what they're doing. And it seems like it's really setting up Ravenloft games for being very character centric, despite the first glance seeming very much about the NPCs. You know, I, I think the actual gameplay of Ravenloft would be very character centric. Yeah, and, and and you mentioned the the dark powers, uh, which uh, a couple of them are, are I think are really cool. I uh, I would say that uh, like the the what's the first one? It's oh echo echoing soul, where it's all about you know you like send out um, uh, you get the the memories 
of your past selves or whatever, and it just kind of mm-hmm. gives you a little mm-hmm. bonus. Uh, it, it reminds me of um, uh, the fourth edition character I played. Uh, I forgot the the race, but it's the oh the deva the deva kind of, mm-hmm. yeah the deva yeah like I, I don't know it's just like but but what I what I think about the the dark powers uh, or excuse me the the, uh, the the bargaining for these dark gifts though it just like warlocks got to be looking over here at their their fellow players going like bro what's the deal <laughs> bro what's, what's up what's up bro <laughs> like, hey, this is my listen. thing but but yeah. that's the thing this is Ravenloft <laughs> and you can yep. make you know like you can make bargains with anybody. It doesn't matter. Like Yeah, yeah. It, if you haven't played Curse of Strahd, it's worth it to read through the Amber Temple because there's oh a, a room in the Amber Temple where you can sort of come across these entities that will trade you things. And like they do it a little bit differently in Curse of Strahd as opposed to the Dark Gifts, but it's 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 a a model for how this might work and how you might look at it. Yeah, so I mean, the dark gifts are, are are cool for the players, but this book itself has uh, its own dark gifts for the DM. So, like Certainly. like you said, this is a bit of a toolkit, and uh, there's some fun stuff in here as far as like tables for thinking about your domains and and stuff like that. But uh, why don't you just run through some of your favorites? Uh, yeah, yeah. In that I, regard, I think I, I have seen this book. Uh discussed as a toolkit a lot in in sort of like online spaces mm-hmm. where people are, are talking about Ravenloft. And I think for me, my opinion of it is that it's like a, it's a good primer for how to run sort of fantasy horror and adventures in Ravenloft. And part of that's a toolkit and the tools that they do give us, I think are excellent. I, I would want it more like at the, in the balance between advice and tools, I favor more tools than advice, but then I've had a lot of experience with running games and, tools are more useful to me. I think for the inexperienced DM, yeah. it's a good balance, right? For the inexperienced DM yeah. or the DM who hasn't run a lot of these kinds of games, the the ratio of advice to tools is really good. They give you enough tools in the form of various tables and, and rules hacks and things that you can add to the game and, and sort of create something that works for your group. And so as an example of this, like the chapter two, all of the sort of different genres of horror come with their own lists of monsters and villains and torments. There's various like adventure sites and settings and plots that you can use. And you couple that with the chapter three domains and you go and pick out some of your favorites or you look at the ones that are inspirational to you and you sort of take that mix it with this. And you can create something different. Like in terms of running like a full on Ravenloft sandbox campaign where you're needing a lot of content and uh, sort of generated, uh, uh, you know, as you need it, it's less useful for that, but it's enough of a foundation that you could build upwards from what they do provide that you're going to have a solid set of tools to run a more open ended uh, style game in Ravenloft. That's my preference. So I always read rule books from that perspective, right? Of how much, how much does the support a sandbox style of game? But it's entirely possible that a sandbox game just isn't appropriate for Ravenloft and that a more focused approach where you're you're in in dialogue with the players about what they want for their characters and where they'd like to go and and the sort of things they'd like to get caught up in, that the tools that they provide uh, in in chapters two and three and four are excellent for that. It gives you what you need. It gets those juices going (laughs) and presents situations that are in theme uh, with the setting. Yeah, I, I will say uh, what it looks like to me. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't support a sandbox. I completely agree. What it does support is something we've talked about before, where it's more of like a, like a adventure park or like a like a. Mm. It gives you enough info to create a ride, and each ride you can think of as its own like domain. Yeah, yeah. So, certainly. you know, yeah. you have Barovia over here where you have Strahd on the whatever roller coaster and then right. you can come over here to this dark domain. And so, you know, but getting in between them, that traversing the park itself, that's, the, that's the key is like finding the right mist. It's like, do you want somebody in your party who's a mist walker and can find yeah. the trinkets that will allow you passage into these different domains? And that, yeah. that becomes it's, that can become its own kind of meta currency in a way. Certainly. Yeah. If <clears throat> you build, you're building up this cache of like, Hey, we can get to like 10 different domains now. Like at any time we can just summon yeah. the mist and pop in there. Right. And like yeah, that becomes yeah. very powerful. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. The ability of, of characters to sort of like have that uh, power to travel between the various domains, I think is going to be mm-hmm. essential if you're running a game purely in Ravenloft as you sort of like pick 
pick your own flavor. And this is where my yeah. inexperience with Ravenloft as a setting in prior editions sort of shows because I always thought it was like this. I always thought it was just a collection of little separate demi-planes with the mist surrounding them, but apparently at one point it wasn't. It was sort of a cohesive landmass and sort of like a, a more traditional setting. And like, there's not really too many nods to that in this book, but at the same time, there's nothing like, there's no barriers for you to just sort of create your own. Mm -hmm. And then because there's a giant list of domains, you can go like, well, these are like the five or six that I'd like to create my own Ravenloft around my own, you know, I don't care about these others or I'm not interested in those, or this isn't the kind of game I want. And so modularity and, and like usability are really a priority with this book. And just like mm -hmm. flipping through the domains for me, looking at it from a toolkit approach, I'm going like, man, like, okay, so Lamordia could fit in this place in my campaign world, <laughs> and then I could do Haslin over yeah. here. That would be this part of the campaign world. And like, I'm not gonna use the mists with them, but just reading about these places and sort of being inspired by them, it'd be easy to like, just take this little bit of chunk and put it over here, yep. and then I'm gonna take this chunk. And then to me, that is, that's pure D&D. &D. Like that is what I've been doing for yeah. The entire time I've been a DM is that kind of approach yeah. of just creating my own thing out of a patchwork of other stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just having, having access to all those domains, uh, is, is like you said, in and of itself, like kind of a treasure trove of just, of, of just at like ready settings and, and, um, places. Um, and, by the way, if uh, you want to check us out in another domain, you can pop over to Patreon, get your Mistwalker token to subscribe there, and that'll give you <laughs> access to a whole other podcast. And then you can come back to YouTube and let the Mist bring you back every Wednesday. Yeah, so, that's good uh, call. Very uh, good. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> but but uh, I have a question for you, Jim. This might be a little silly. Yeah. But do you think in 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 Lamordia that the owl bears are literally like owls and bears stitched together. Like oh, yeah. since it is all about the Dr. Frankenstein body yeah, yeah. horror. Like I yeah. can just imagine like a, a dire owl and you <laughs> stitch the wings onto a bear's body and it's just horrible. It looks exactly the same except just a horrible like monstrosity. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that it, just terrifies me. It really does. I, I think that sort of like taxidermy necromancy is perfect uh, oh, for, for yeah. Ravenloft, which, which is really one of the things I like about the tools that it has, like all of the different genres of horror, uh, and then in the, then seeing how they are expressed in the different domains, and then going into chapter four about like how you can also reinforce some of these things through various rules with like stress and fear and curses and things like that. Like all of those parts of the toolkit, I think are excellent. And, and like I said earlier, they are a solid foundation to build upwards from, uh, and, and mm -hmm. you know, even if it's not like, oh yeah, there's not like crammed full of D hundred tables, Jim, I was like, well, that's okay. Not everybody needs that. <laughs> uh, and not every book needs to be written for my preference. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think it succeeds at, at what it aims to do, which is like, it's a primer for DMs who want to run fantasy horror games and it provides enough tools to get you going with that. It, yeah, yeah, most most definitely. Um, like all in all, I think it's a it's a it's a very solid book. It uh, I again I, I think if they kind of expound on some areas that they that they don't really uh, in this book uh, in future endeavors, mm -hmm. it'll just get like as far as like presenting a setting, it'll mm -hmm. just get better and better. Uh, like sure. like you said, uh, a few uh, some more tools for the DM to use like immediately as opposed to. Because uh, this book seems more like you should really read this up front, craft yeah. your adventure from yeah. the tables, yeah. and then you can present what you create to the players. But what right. I would like yeah. to see more of, and I think why the reason why like some of the things we're working on is giving giving DMs usable content at the table. Because sometimes the players don't go the right way, or you know that that's the wrong sure, thing. Yeah, they I don't go the way that yeah. you thought that they would go. Yeah, yeah, and you need something to kind of fill in that gap because creatively you had you had you had you, had you put your energy this. elsewhere. So yeah. like, yeah, having those more like immediate tools. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that that that's like, you know, I think that's that's just really my only. My only yeah, yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a small uh, missed opportunity, but yeah, it, it does stand out to me too. Yeah, I I, I yeah, think in, but in there's a lot of good but, like. Yeah. Yes. And I think like where it really excels is in that being a primer for running fantasy games. And, and like you said, like if, if a DM can sit down and absorb this book, 
the advice it has in it is very good. And while if you're an old hat DM, if you've been running Ravenloft and horror games for a while, it might seem boilerplate or obvious. It's easy to forget that for a lot of people, this is their first time coming across this sort of gaming. And for all of the new players that came in in fifth edition, for all of the new people who have discovered this hobby, yeah. and it's like they're, they've decided like, this is gonna be my thing. Like, I, I love this. Like, it's worth it to have something that covers the basics, that goes like, all right, here's how you, here's how you describe a monster in a horror game so that you build that tension and heighten the unwrongness of it, just what's unnatural and weird about it. Here's, here's how you set a mood at a table. Here's how you prepare your campaign. Here's how you do a session zero. Here's how you like survey the players to see what they're in the mood for and what, what they enjoy and what they're going to like out of this. And like just the advice alone, while my first impulse to it was just like, there's just too much going on. Like it's too much text <laughs> give me tables give me magic items give me encounters you know mm -hmm. that when i got past that and i sat and started reading it i was like you know if i was if i didn't already know this this would be uh, this would be gold you know this would be so mm -hmm. valuable and i think if, if you're new to it if you're if you're curious about sort of exploring this style of game and when i say fantasy horror just referring back to the fact that this is they're using the tropes of of gothic horror body horror cosmic horror whatever in a fantasy game to create a pastiche, right? It's not actual horror. This isn't Call of Cthulhu. This isn't cult. You're not playing that yeah. kind of game. You know, you're D and D heroes, <laughs> you know, but you can mm -hmm. still have a different kind of fantasy game uh, at, by following the advice that that's in this book. And uh, I, I think that that is really where it excels. And in that sense, for what it needs to do, to be, a, to be a guide to Ravenloft as a setting and a guide to running fantasy horror games, it's great. Like, it's really good. And I think, like, the fact that it doesn't look exactly like Eberron, the, the you know, uh, Rise from the Last War, is fine. I kind of think mm -hmm. that every setting book they make should be different because every setting's different. The needs of it are different. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, with that and uh, on top of that there are some fun monsters as a Dresden fan I have to mention the loop guru because like oh, yeah. reading the stat block for that I'm like yeah I see how that wrecked a whole police station like, <laughs> <laughs> right right well I, a special okay so like there's a lot of monsters in there I, I wish there were more but there's really good ones in there they're really cool but the loop guru is mm -hmm. one that I was like oh yes because I found that the the fifth <laughs> yes. edition werewolf is just like Come here, little puppy. All right, like, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, You're past fourth guy. level, I don't have anything to fear from you. The uh -huh. Lubru is very different and, like, is, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's, oh, that's nasty, you know. Mm -hmm. Because, like, here's the thing. When I, when I was thinking about this and, and reading some of the advice for players and DMs about, like, who's, who is the, the, the person that's supposed to be scared? Is it the real person in the player or the imaginary person of the character? And mm -hmm. I start thinking to myself, like, Listen, when I want to be scared playing D&D, I'm going to play a version of D&D that has negative levels in energy drain, right? I'm going to, I'm going to play a version of D&D where my character can get offed in one hit beyond first level. And if I'm playing yeah. Ravenloft, when I'm playing Ravenloft, I don't want to be scared. I want to be put into moral quandaries. I want to have, you know, Sisyphean quests against the dark powers that are never going to win, but I do anyway. Right. I, I want to be put into situations where I've got to make the most out of a terrible set of choices. I don't want any of these. Yeah. But it's the struggle with having to make do with morally gray areas with what should I do? There's no right or wrong answer here. The fact that there's no alignments in here, I think, reinforces that because it yeah. it opens up the, the playing field to say, like, well, there's no clearly this person's evil thing right like even strahd for all his terribleness for all just the the terrible things that strahd does there's a humanity and a tragedy there that that adds an element of complexity and and grayness to the setting that i that i like it's why i love dark fantasy right it's why mm -hmm. i love playing in games where it's like there's just no good answer here right <laughs> you just have to survive yeah. you know yeah and i uh, Sorry, I, I was going to go, but I want to give you a chance to say something because otherwise I'll just. No, talk I was just going to. I was just going to reinforce it. Something that I always thought of playing Call of Cthulhu and Cult and everything is you may win the day, but you will lose part of yourself. Yeah, and that's just 
that's that's the transaction. That's the equation of uh, of good dark horror and dark fantasy. That should be the equation yeah. that you you arrive at. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah, when I think of like our experience with Curse of Strahd, and the two of us mm-hmm. playing, you know, two characters with some NPCs to help fill out the party, and like final confrontation with Strahd, we're fighting him, you know, tenth level paladin cleric and you know, defeated Strahd and it's like, okay, well our characters stick around to help make this place better. You know, like you're, you know, you're obviously going against what you know, metagame, which is like, this isn't going to get any better, but like, you know, just, <laughs> yes. you know, my characters, no are, hope here. you know, paladin of devotion. They will worship ill they They're they, they, they've, they've mm-hmm. spent 10 levels in this place, understanding what kind of uh, problems that they face and getting to trust them and spending the better part of a year of trying to restore things after Strahd. And then Strahd comes back. As a player in that moment, when I found that out at the end of that campaign, I was mad. I was like, that's bullshit. That's D and D. I won. <laughs> you know, like yeah. like that, that that knee-jerk reaction of like, no, my guy's a paladin. He killed the vampire. Everything's fine. It's sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. Yeah. And Ravenloft says, No, it isn't. The tragedy of yeah. Ravenloft is that your paladin is stuck there fighting this mm-hmm. fight for as long as they be we get reincarnated again and again and again. They are a part of this place. And that that's yeah. that sadness, that tragedy is so satisfying, even though my knee jerk reaction is to say it's BS. I don't want that. Yeah. Like when I reflect on it, I love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing is uh, Ravenloft is a, is a flat circle. So you're just going to be in there <laughs> living that over again. Yeah. And again and yeah. Again. It's a hell. It's a it's nightmare. It's a whole different. Yep. Yeah, well, it's 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 your own it's your own purgatory, right? Like right. that is, you know, it's, it, it, and one could even use it as such. It, yeah. That's the thing is that that's what you want, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's there for you. Let the players become, or let the, let the characters become a new dark lord. Uh, yeah, I hear. Yeah, ask, I hear. Uh, you know, yeah, I hear. Dark on needs a new. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Come on uh, yeah. over to Dark on and get oh, your right. Dark yeah, on. yeah, that's definitely gonna happen if I ever run a game there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, you've had to make some morally compromising choices and the dark powers have taken a notice of that. Uh, so yeah, mm-hmm. fun times. <laughs> you've passed, you've, you're hired. That's how you end that campaign. Is right. The yeah, dark yeah. powers going, <laughs> you're hired. Exactly. Yeah. You start yeah. on Monday, <laughs> but it's already Monday. Yes. It's always Monday. It's always Monday. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I think Ravenloft is, uh, is great. I was skeptical at first when I, when I first heard that it was going to be Ravenloft, they were updating. I was like, really? But now that I've spent time with it and sort of thought about it and, and read the book, I, it seems like a, the obvious choice. And I think it's well executed. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, stepping back a bit from it, we've got new designers coming into D&D. You can tell that they're bringing some fresh ideas in, that they are, are looking at the game in a, a new light, in a new mm-hmm. lens. A lot of the changes that are made to the setting and the setting elements sort of give it a fresh gloss while still keeping it within the themes and 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 sort of tone of Ravenloft, you know, of updating the setting. Personally, if I was going to run Ravenloft, I would use the fifth edition book with probably the first or second edition rules because of negative levels. You know, like to really, really drive home the fact that these creatures and monsters in here are terrible and will mess you up. But like the mm-hmm. setting as presented in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft is is great, and if, I, I highly recommend it. Yeah. yeah. So it's Leonard, he would market a buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very niche group that will get that joke. <laughs> And afterwards, we will be uh, starting our, our uh, Ravenloft book club, where we'll be reviewing Strahd's Eat, Pray, Blood. Nice. Stay tuned after the show. <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs>